Many people obsess over ketone levels or reaching ketosis, but this has actually nothing to do with autophagy whatsoever or with phagocytosis or with most of the benefits of fasting. In reality, eating fat, especially MCT oil found in coconut oil, will increase ketones much more quickly than fasting will, but ketones only have limited health benefits, though they are particularly helpful in dementia. When protein becomes low in the bloodstream, mTOR, that is mammalian target of rapamycin, turns off like a switch. However, you still need protein to create new cells and repair old ones, and that's where autophagy and phagocytosis come into play. Your cells start to eat up debris within the cell, which is old, useless proteins that are damaged, and then old and broken organelles, and finally the ribosomes themselves, and these are the factories inside of cells that create all the proteins in the body. This gives your old, damaged cells a brand new lease on life. We're both old. We're at the end of our natural born lives. Uh, I have 40 years ahead of me of vibrant sexual dynamism, sir. <laughs> That's why I hang out with you. You crack me up. Now, do ketones have any benefits? They definitely have some in their own right, and some pretty important ones. The main one is that they provide clean fuel for the brain, which does not damage the critical mitochondria within neurons that keep these cells healthy. When your liver makes ketones, it takes special measures to ensure that they are non-deuterized. That is, that they don't have any deuterium molecules. These deuterium molecules are hydrogen atoms which have an extra neutron, and these are very damaging to mitochondria. They also create non-functional DNA strands, so it is incumbent on everyone to avoid them as much as humanly possible especially for the delicate neurons which are found mostly in the brain. These are found in very high levels in highly processed foods, especially during high heat processing, such as in the production of canola oil and other highly processed seed oils. And this is possibly one of the biggest problems with these seed oils, though having the oxidized fats in them is also a big problem because this goes directly to your liver as liver fat. Aside from being free from deuterium, merely burning carbs itself is also dangerous to the brain. It produces far more reactive oxygen species and acidity than fat burning, and reactive oxygen species is the main driver of aging in the body, and especially when it comes to mitochondrial and neuronal death. That's why Alzheimer's is often called type 3 diabetes, but in reality dementia is all largely the same in origin whether it presents as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or some other form. Sadly, due to the blood-brain barrier, free fatty acids, which are the main fuel source of the body, in contrary to what most bro scientists will tell you, is not available to the brain. So when you're in ketosis, you are forced to burn pure carbs within the brain, this is no doubt why ketones are in the body in the first place, because they're able to pass through this barrier and get to the brain and provide clean, pure energy. And we're born in ketosis, and we would in nature spend a great deal of the time in ketosis, especially in between meals after a failed hunt. And vinegar, which is a short chain fatty acid that can penetrate the blood brain barrier, also has this very beneficial effect on the brain and in every cell in the body. Fascinating. Pure energy. While many people excessively worry about ketones, especially on a low-carb diet, they are really there for when you are fasting. Before agriculture, humans were carnivorous, even more so than wolves and arctic foxes. The world was covered in grasslands and humans hunted megafauna, like woolly mammoths to survive. That wasn't just in some places, but it was worldwide. And it is proven by isotope analysis and ancient bone samples that everybody before agriculture was just eating meat, lots and lots of meat. 
Now we did eat other things whenever we could get a hold of them, but we can look at what percentage it was, and the actual percentage is negligible. Some people claim protein stalls their weight loss, but experimentally it has been shown that adding protein to the diet always increases lean tissue and lowers body fat when fat and carbohydrate levels are kept constant, especially when it comes to leucine, which is abundant in animal products and is also a useful supplement for those wanting to gain muscle or to lose weight. So don't think you should limit your protein unless you're trying to do a fasting mimicking diet. When you are eating, you should have as much as possible if you want to have maximum health. Just keep in mind that often people will reduce fat when increasing protein, which is an easy mistake to make because you can't just eyeball it very easily and figure out how much you want to eat. And reducing fat too much for too long can actually slow the metabolism and slow down weight loss. This is no different from any other diet and the carnivore diet is really not different than anything else when it comes to weight loss. And it's going to slow your energy expenditure over time if you don't take in enough energy. It may be a little easier to eat less on a carnivore diet because you're not as hungry, but if you go too hard at weight loss, it's just gonna stall out eventually. If you want more than a few pounds of weight loss, it really is fasting between 36 to 72 hours that will help you lose weight without slowing your metabolism. In fact, it tends to speed it up. Any other way you try it will be massively less efficient at best. You're gonna be cutting out 10 pounds worth of food to lose one pound, or else it's just gonna completely fail, especially if you're losing large amounts. Fasting is the natural lifestyle for humans, and we fast more readily than any other creature on Earth including bears and other hibernating animals. In animal studies, very long fasts back to back for the lifetime of the animal are shown to have nothing but health benefits on average. So they'll take a mouse and they'll have it eat only every other day for its entire lifetime. And what they find is amazing health benefits. So don't be afraid you will fast too much. Just make sure you get enough animal-based nutrition when you do eat especially plenty of protein and plenty of EPA and DHA, which basically just means animal products ultimately. And you might wanna break the fast with the broth, especially when you're first starting off, or a roast, something easily digestible. And don't feel like something is wrong if you don't get high ketones while you're fasting. If your liver is full of liver fat, it will be constantly shooting sugar into the bloodstream. So it may take some time fasting before you actually need ketones, but rest assured that when your body does need them, it will produce them. Some TMG can also help with this process, and this just provides methyl groups, and this allows the liver to mobilize fat out of the liver so it can ultimately be burned, and taurine can help repair the damage. Hyaluronic acid is also very helpful for repairing and protecting the liver. As usual, I have the doses I take in the description. And I also describe how I take them, so you can just look in the description and see that, because people are always asking me how I take it and what I take. And that's basically how I started putting all of that in there in the first place. Interestingly, Inuit people in the Arctic have genetics that stop them from entering into ketosis very easily, even though they eat more dietary fat than anyone on Earth. This could support the idea that we're not meant to have constantly high ketones, which are acidic and can therefore cause problems at very high levels. It is probably ideal for healthy people to leave ketosis when eating, then slowly get into ketosis in between meals and to skip out on snacking, which impedes this process. So you're gonna get into like a light ketosis in between meals. That's probably what happened in nature. And keep in mind that the Inuit are eating extremely high fat diets, which are probably beyond what even uh, people on a keto diet would do. For most people, you probably just don't need to worry about ketones too much. Just realize that a lower carb diet is good for the brain and fasting has an amazing effect on brain health. And if you really want ketones, the best thing you can possibly do is to fast because you can get it up much higher that way. You can also get benefits for your brain by simply consuming ketones as a supplement too which especially makes sense for those who are experiencing brain issues. 
Hi. Who are you? I'm the brain cell. The brain cell? Yeah. Just you, yeah? Well, me and my secretary. Now, I don't recommend you take carbs while you're fasting, but technically this doesn't stop autophagy or phagocytosis either. The problem is that it will spike insulin, which will increase both insulin and cortisol and lead to the burning of large amounts of lean tissue, especially collagen. So while some people promote juice fasting, this is both more difficult to endure and much more damaging to the body. And while technically it won't break the fast in and of itself, or at least not the benefits of the fast, chances are you're not going to stay on the fast very long if you allow yourself to consume carbs because this also massively increases your appetite. Eating fat won't impede autophagy at all, and you can get all the benefits of fasting this way. In fact, this is the quickest way to get your ketones high, so it may be useful for controlling hunger or controlling brain disorders like epilepsy. I've tried this before, but for me it does not seem to make fasting much easier. But it is something worth trying for people who are concerned more about the health benefits of fasting, and maybe they actually don't want to lose weight. In reality, it is only stopping protein consumption that triggers the main benefits of fasting. This includes autophagy, phagocytosis, DNA repair in cells by activating sirtuin genes, stem cell release, and renewing the white blood cells that are critical for immune system function, and much, much more. And this is controlled by mTOR, and when you turn off mTOR, then AMPK ramps up, and that forces the body to produce energy, and basically puts it on the path to autophagy, and autophagy within the immune cells leads to phagocytosis, because they're like little independent animals almost. And when they get hungry, they have to go around and eat stuff. Drastically limiting protein intake to less than 18 grams a day is how the fasting mimicking diet works. So this is an alternative to fasting that can give you a lot of the benefits, but it's going to take quite a bit more of the fasting mimicking diet to get all of the benefits of fasting, but there's a lot of proof that it can help reverse diabetes, it can help with brain issues, it can help with stem cells and so on. You just have to do a little more of it. So you might want to do five days instead of three days if you're doing the FMD. The calories on the FMD don't really matter. It's the lowered protein levels that will enable the body to enter autophagy. This is not as beneficial as a true fast, but it may be easier to deal with for many people, especially the elderly and those with serious digestive issues. But I've tried this before too, and I would say to people who are healthy enough to do it, which is 99% of the population, it's probably easier to do a three-day true fast than it is to try and do a fasting mimicking diet for five days. You may psychologically think it's going to be easier to do it the other way, but in reality, it's probably not. And whatever you're doing, just work up to it over time. If you feel dizzy or extremely nauseous or have some other strange thing happen, just stop and uh, try again later. <laughs> never give up. Never surrender. Oh, shut up. No. Never give up. Never surrender. And I really wanted to thank everyone who's become a member of the channel. I reached the goal of 100 members which qualifies me for a special bonus. So this really helps the channel out a great deal beyond what the amount of the membership itself is. It's quite a surprising bonus. Since I have so much going on now due to a death in the family and many details that have to be taken care of, I haven't been able to get ahead on my video making, but the plan is to continue weekly videos, but to get ahead in the process by a few videos, and as soon as I get them done, just give that access to all of the members so they can see them as soon as they're available and everyone else will get them once a week. And I would just do it whenever like that for everybody, but YouTube kind of works better if you have a regular update schedule. Otherwise, people who aren't really that into the channel may not actually see stuff or they may forget about the channel or whatever. You don't want to go for like three weeks without a video and then do five videos or something like that, which is kind of how it would be if I just did it as I found the time to do it. 
I'd also like to get a little bit of members only content eventually. I'm not going to be able to make full fledged videos like the ones that I make weekly, two times a week. There's just not enough time. But I do want to do something where I just talk about some interesting factoids and stuff like that once in a while. Uh, I'll see how it goes, but I probably won't be able to get into that for some time. And anyway, back to the video. Well, it's tempting to chase after ketones. Don't mistake ketones for the benefits of fasting. On Dr. Chafee's channel, he had a patient who came into the office with a resting insulin level of 72. And after two months on a carnivore diet, it reduced to 35. That's amazing, and it flies in the face of what mainstream doctors will tell you is possible. But you could get those same benefits from just a few days of fasting. And that's the real benefit of fasting is it's healing when you get into these really sick states like people who've been eating poorly for many years or just from the damage of aging as we all age. Diet is helpful to keep from doing further damage, but you really need fasting to do serious healing, especially if you're trying to recover from decades and decades of eating your food according to the diabetes pyramid, which is essentially dog kibble. Fasting is the most powerful intervention we have for the human body short of surgery, and it's the only way to fully activate the immune system. When protein is low enough in the blood plasma, cells are forced to consume protein waste inside of their protoplasm. This also triggers DNA repairing sirtuin genes within the cell itself, and this is how your DNA gets repaired. And it's important to realize that most of the time this just never gets triggered. Your body has these repair mechanisms, but it doesn't just blindly do it on and on. It's expecting you to live in environments where you're going to be fasting sometimes. And for example, most of your autophagy happens with your sleep because that's when you're fasting. For macrophages and other immune cells, this actually causes them to hunt for protein sources within your body because they're basically independent organisms that have to survive by taking in nutrients from all of the stuff around them. While autophagy happens only inside the cell itself, phagocytosis causes immune cells to clean up pathogens, senescent cells, scar tissue, and tumors all over the body. And it also triggers the release of more of these cells to do their job of cleaning up. Perhaps the most important benefit is that it leads to the regeneration of the immune system itself. This has an amazing effect on preventing or even repairing the ravages of aging because if it's not working properly, your senescent, useless immune cells can't repair the damage of aging and it can't defend against intruders like pathogens and, very critically, cancer. Hey, tiny red blood cell. Come over here a minute. All right. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Take that, you... But if you keep your immune system in good shape, you'll have the tools to stand up to any challenge. Stab him, Lester! <laughs> Stab it, you do what? <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Uh...